everyone. Welcome to a midweek sermon follow-up where we talk about this past Sunday's message and break that down, uh, talk about this week's readings as we seek to continue to learn these lessons and apply them. Uh, we realized this past Sunday we had some tef- technical difficulties and so the <laughs> live stream wasn't working. So we'll make sure to also include a link in the caption of this video if you're watching it online or if you got to it from our email, we'll include a link to the sermon mm-hmm. as well. So you can watch that first if you missed it. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're preaching 1 Peter 3, 18 through 22, talking about Jesus, the righteous one, dying for us, the unrighteous one. Then he raises some interesting observations on baptism, which mm-hmm. raised some good questions. Yeah. Uh, you know, who were the spirits that Jesus ministered to in prison? What's that getting at? <laughs> so I felt like it was a really fun blend of just beautiful, impactful theology. Yeah. And then also lessons on how to engage with tough questions or interesting oh, yeah. questions and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so any thoughts before we dive into the reading? Yeah, I think, yeah, it was a very fun, I think, I mean, it was very deep and depth worthy, but it was very fun just the, you know, because that passage is very like, Jesus went and ministered to the prisoners and preached to them. What? What does that yeah. mean? Okay. Yeah. It's just really cool. Um, just, yeah, I thought uh, that the beginning of it, just the focus of like, Jesus, the righteous dying for the unrighteous and just kind of letting us kind of sit with that for a second because it can get like like we just I I don't know what it is maybe we take it for granted or maybe we just forget like Mm -hmm. the weight of it um because we are forgiven in Christ and we do have a new identity and we are a new creation and we are forgiven but I think it's helpful and healthy to think about man before Christ I was completely unworthy I was completely unrighteous Mm -hmm. And the only reason that Christ died for me is because he is righteous. Yeah. And uh, the only reason that I can stand here is because his righteousness was imputed to me. Exactly. Like that, it's crazy. And and all of that comes from love. I mean, he's motivated out of love. Driven by a deep love for us that we can't even that. wrap our minds around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, uh, I want to make a, a quick note here. Um, I want to say this respectfully. I haven't had a chance to talk to this individual personally uh, to to get their thoughts on this comment. Um, a leader who some of you may be aware of, and I'm not going to say their name because, like I said, I haven't had a chance to talk to them personally or anything. Mm. Um, they're nobody here in Mansfield. Like I'm not talking about a pastor at another church no, in no, no. or anything like that. No, no. But uh, someone with. A national reputation or awareness. Some pretty big influence in the Christian culture. And yeah. The, yeah. Um, one of their most famous works has been getting promoted recently. And in it, they say that uh, for the Christian, knowing we are forgiven is not enough. You need to then experience a release that the whole purpose of their work is to kind of coach you and help you get to that point and, mm-hmm. you know, be delivered from mm-hmm. No, full stop. <laughs> knowing we are forgiven by God is enough. Hell yeah. <laughs> knowing that the blood of Christ covers me is enough. Because what that's getting at is, Mario, you knowing that God has forgiven you isn't enough. Mm-hmm. You need me to walk you through mm-hmm. releasing something. And yeah. you need me, like, I have now elevated what I can do for you over what God has done for you. Yeah. Like, that's messed up. Yeah. Knowing that the righteous Christ Mm -hmm. died for me, the unrighteous one. Mm -hmm. And because of my belief and profession and confession that he is Lord and I Mm -hmm. need him to save me, God forgives me. First John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to Mm -hmm. forgive us all our sins and all our unrighteousness. Close Like, that's enough. I mean, and the Bible makes it a point to continually tell us it is enough. I mean, Ephesians 1. You are adopted and you have been made blameless. I mean, that is like blameless <laughs> as if you have never done anything. Hebrews, <laughs> enter confidently into the throne room of God. <laughs> like Jesus perpetually lives to intercede for us. That knowledge is enough. Oh, yeah. You do not yeah. need me to walk <laughs> you through anything. Yeah. 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 Um, so I want to include that there as we're talking about this idea, just because it seems like in the last couple of weeks, this this individual and their their teaching has been put yeah. in the spotlight more. Yeah, we've um, had multiple, we've had people come to us say, "Hey, 
you what know, about this? we're going yeah. through this study, we've heard this person, this book. Yep. What do you think about it? Because we're getting some weird vibes, you yep. know, it's like really weird, you so, know, so it's, it's, I mean, it's growing even more it, in popularity. Yeah. So in case anybody has come across that statement that knowing that you are forgiven isn't enough, come talk to us. Uh, yeah. And I mean, to me, it, it's, uh, yeah, we could talk about it we forever. Go. I go um, for like four hours. We can talk about it forever, but but to me, ask Mario how far fired up I was about twenty minutes ago. Some residue left over from some, the fire. Some residue. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, but speaking of enough, speaking of yeah. the beauty of Christ's righteousness being imputed to yep. us, Colossians two. Man, you talk what about a <laughs> great follow up chapter to the sermon, like just oh, a, yeah. a great, you know, where he says that. I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you that their hearts may be encouraged. Mm. Like He's like, man, this is my burden and my passion mm -hmm. is I just desperately want you to be encouraged, being knit mm. together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ. Mm. Uh, yeah, I just, I love those man, verses. That's so uh, good. <laughs> you know, just that reminder that this should be our burden for one another. Yeah. Like, yeah. not to discourage one another, but to encourage one another that, like, Christ is sufficient. Yes. And the, the riches of God's love and mystery are mm -hmm. wrapped up in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one yeah. who died for us. It is sufficient. And I think that is just because for me, when I was reading it, verses 9 through 13? Mm. No, 14? I mean, all the way even to the finishing. Or <laughs> we, well, we, we read 13 through 15 in the sermon. Yeah, you did. But yeah. But when you start, like, because he says, in him you were circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands by putting off the body of the flesh, but by the circumcision of Christ. To me, that was getting at, okay, Christ's sacrifice and the blood of Christ is enough. You don't mm -hmm. need the Extra, law. You don't yep. need add-ons you don't need external rights and behaviors yep. and don't need that and then having been buried with him in baptism mm -hmm. the symbolism what baptism has but also the great spirit i think the great spiritual effect that it has on us too in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of god who raised him from the dead i mean in the same power i mean that Unreal. that is a spiritual aspect to oh, baptism it's and incredible to, to, to know that and then, and you were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh or your heart, God made you alive together with him, having mm -hmm. forgiven all your trespasses. I mean, it's, that's enough. It's so good. <laughs> Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels. Yep. So actually, and this does flow into, now this wasn't directly related to the sermon, but it raises, you know, we talked about in the sermon, that when when Peter's writing in First Peter and he talks about you know baptism is a, a an appeal yeah that word is really a pledge it's mm -hmm. it's a covenantal agreement uh, yeah. uh, I agree to the terms and conditions the terms and conditions <laughs> for for us being mm -hmm. that I acknowledge and profess this and know this to be true but then also this idea that we have a responsibility to live for Jesus mm. and to live like Jesus. You know what I mean? It goes back to verse six. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, mm. right? And so then this chapter kind of builds on what the sermon was saying. And then it yeah. starts to go into more of those details of what does it look like to walk in him mm. and to the limited part of the terms and conditions that we can fulfill mm. to pursue a fulfillment of those, right? Like, yep. okay, God, here are your terms and conditions of salvation. I accept it, I believe it. Mm. I will do my best by your power, right? Like filled with the Holy Spirit, mm. not on my own strength. I wanna mm. always make that clear, always yeah. emphasize yeah. that. Like, <clears throat> But you have called me to live in a certain way. I wanna mm. do that. And some of the examples are insisting on asceticism, mm. right? Like the idea that Christians need to be broke. Like yeah. a Christian can't own anything. Yeah. You know, like if you or are you have car, to cause suffering in your own life. life in order to be right, holy. like, yep. Worship of angels and going on in detail. I think that going on in details about visions. Oh, yeah. I think that one's very relevant for the church today. Oh, yeah. We want to talk so much about personal experience and this overemphasis on, well, what I have experienced. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, right? He says, like, let no one disqualify you going on in details about visions. Yeah. We get so obsessed with that stuff. We do. And scripture's like, 
no, man, you've missed the point. If you're yeah. that's puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind, mm. the mind that is all emotional and driven mm. by sensuality, which we've equated sensuality with sexuality, and it regularly mm. is connected, but sensuality is really that overemphasis of emotion. Mm. And so the mind is puffed up without reason mm. by sensuality, by wow. this emotional, experiential yeah. religion. Yeah. You know, and he's like, yeah. no, that, that's not what it is. It's it's Christ. It's mm. substance belongs to Christ. Yeah. yeah. So don't get distracted from that. Don't get distracted and don't let it disqualify. I think it's yeah. very important that he puts it disqualify because I think we can look at those things. And if we're not rooted or maybe we're newer in our faith or we're just learning how to really take this thing seriously, it can be very discouraging to look at someone like, yeah, man, I've had a vision yesterday of Jesus. And man, like he was just showing me all these things. And it's like, well, I'm not getting visions. Am I, I a have, lesser Christian? Do I have yeah. the Holy Spirit? Do I? He's like, don't let that disqualify you. Christ is the substance, you know? Oh, and, such a good point. And I think it's just that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So great, great chapter. I love Colossians yeah. 2. Um, any other thoughts on Colossians 2? And then we've got Hebrews 10 was our Not much. Chapter. I really I really just think, man, I know we need to, we, we sh you should read every week's readings because it really helps you to tie in the sermon and see it in the rest of scripture. But this week's readings, really read them <laughs> because there is so much truth in it. <laughs> so yeah, what did, what did you... Think about uh, Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. I, I love Hebrews. I love, I love, like Hebrews. Who do you think wrote Hebrews? Side note. This is speculation, by the way. Total speculation. <laughs> this is total speculation. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they're lying. Because we do not know who wrote Hebrews. Yeah. There is no absolute proof who wrote Hebrews. There are really educated guesses. Oh, yeah. But they're guesses. Yeah. Based on linguistics, so based on language patterns, based on speech patterns, based on thematic patterns, um, but even more so that for me, and again, let me reiterate, this is my speculation, <laughs> based on the structure of the argument presented in Hebrews, based mm. on the very meticulous, crafted, like legal argument mm. almost that you see in Hebrews, yeah. I think it's Paul. Yeah. Because I think you see Paul's intellectual style to dismantling a conversation. Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm. he he does this in, in his letters, this beautiful introduce the problem, anticipate the yeah, problem, yeah, yeah. remove it before it can become an obstacle. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's just a very meticulous yeah. building on one another, mm. intricate details that all support the bigger picture. Mm just a very finely crafted yeah. argument. And, yeah. and that's what, how I read Hebrews. Yeah. Is I think it's a very finely crafted yeah. argument. Absolutely. So I think you see Paul's personality come through in it. Yeah. Um, but that's one of those fun conversations. Yeah, and, and my point was too, because I think I speculate Apollos. Okay. Um, because, you know, for reasons like in Acts where he's equated as this eloquent Jewish religious guy who yep. came to faith and knows Jewish religion well. And Corinthians, knows. we see that he's like on the same level as yeah. Paul and Peter in terms of church influence. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so I just, I yeah. wanted to kind of snug that in there a little bit to kind of make the point from your sermon, like it's okay to have a different opinion on things of that matter where it's not. Absolutely. Because you know. when you lay out your <laughs> arguments for why it could be Apollos, my response to that is, yeah. Like, could be any. <laughs> could easily be Apollos, right? Because it's not like I'm going to get to heaven and they're going to be like, who wrote Hebrews? <laughs> oh, okay. Can't you got it, right? Can't get it. <laughs> yeah, right, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Hebrews Anyways. 10, uh, I love I love Hebrews 10. You know, talking about the shade of the law compared to the perfection of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it goes back to like some of my favorite verses. Yeah. Verse 10, by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. once for all. Yeah. Just the once for all, like. Yeah. Done. That is what makes me holy. But then I love the inclusion of verse 14, for by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. I was just, uh, and so it keeps us exactly from being say. like, well, I'm done. The work's done, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm perfect. I'm declared I'm perfect. I'm going to sit back and relax, right? It's like, no, no, no. 
we who are being <laughs> sanctified. So it's just a reminder of we yeah. need to keep growing. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's some great Trinitarian evidence tucked into these verses mm. that we won't fully get into. Nope. But you know, yep. as you're reading for it, look for, okay, mm -hmm. where do I see that the Holy Spirit is equal with God? Because there's, there's a very specific mm. verse in here that I think is just one yeah. place that makes it very clear that the Holy Spirit is God. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Which Absolutely. is, it's cool. I love when those details are tucked yeah. in. Uh, and then you have the whole second section, the full assurance of faith, right? Let mm. us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. <sighs> yeah. I, again, it's just... It's beautiful. Those are, th I mean, it's just things that we constantly need to be reminded of. And just waking up and like, man, I've been washed with pure water today. I have been washed with pure, sufficient water. And and it is another, yeah, because like the one, to verse 23 for me is just like, let us hold fast to the mm -hmm. confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. What I love about that Ooh. is the emphasis on God's faithfulness, not mine. Yeah. So he said, for he who, he is faithful, yeah. I may stumble, I We're may gonna be tempted to waver. fall, I may waver in some aspects, I may not get it right all the time, but God does. And That's so a let great me, point. Yeah, so let's hold fast to that confession. So I thought that was just... That it's, was a, it's, a, it's a fantastic chapter. Yeah. I mean... It is. So, so good. Yeah. And, and what it reminds me of, what it challenges me to the standard it sets mm -hmm. the truth that it it draws to the front of my mind i love yeah. hebrews 10 when considering this idea of the righteousness of christ covering my unrighteousness mm -hmm. and so desiring to live a life that is just worshipful yeah. because of that i agree and really honestly there's not too much more to say with it i mean nope. i mean it's just packed full of <laughs> good stuff good stuff yeah so so read them, read Colossians 2, read Hebrews 10, spend time with them, saturate yourselves in them this week. Really just appreciate the richness that God has packed into these verses. Um, if you have any thoughts, any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, we'll see you Sunday. See you then. Hey everyone, Pastor Sam here. Thanks for joining us for another midweek Bible study video. If you didn't see the sermon that we were talking about, you can find it here. Or if you're interested in more of these midweek Bible study videos and thoughts as Pastor Mario and I break things down, you can find that here as well. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all our content. Thanks for joining us.